The predictions of oil cartel. Will the price of oil rise to $200? Will the sanctions against Russia after its invasion of Ukraine lead to a new energy crisis? How will the energy supplied from Russia be substituted? What are the predictions of oil company bosses? Thousands of oil company executives gathered in Houston, the oil capital of the world, for the energy conference Sarah Week, organized annually by S&P Global on March 7. In addition to the geopolitical developments caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the energy crisis that may arise due to the sanctions and embargo against Russia was the agenda of the meeting. The analysis on The Economist's website on the subject sheds light on the future, based on the views of the OPEC Secretary General and the executives of oil companies. Mohamed Barkindo, Secretary General of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, in his speech in Houston, conveyed the dramatic geopolitical developments that have taken place in the last few weeks. Barkindo said that since the establishment of the OPEC cartel in 1960, there have been seven painful cycles of ups and downs in oil. He was worried that the Russian crisis could lead to another such disaster. His warning coincided with a turning point in energy history. In retaliation for Vladimir Putin's bloody and unprovoked attack on Ukraine, the US banned Russian oil imports outright on March 8, and Britain announced it could make a similar move in the coming months. President Joe Biden talked about targeting the main artery of the Russian economy. While no EU country has joined the embargo, on the same day the European Commission announced that the EU's reliance on Russian gas, which accounts for around 40% of its total fossil fuel consumption, by two-thirds this year, is designed to end it completely, well before 2030. Announced its strategy, Putin responded with a decree on March 8 threatening to cut exports of commodities, which, given Russia's huge role in many products from wheat to nickel, could upset world markets. The price of Brent crude oil, which is an international benchmark, rose above $130 per barrel. When this process is over, no matter how it ends, the world oil industry will be different, says Daniel Jurgen, energy expert and vice president of S&P Global. Will there be an oil shock? A short-term result could be the rehabilitation of big oil companies accused of helping fuel the climate crisis. The prospect of an oil shock led even Biden's climate-friendly administration to embrace the unpopular U.S. energy giants. Officials, including the president's climate ambassador, John Kerry, were expected to rant at oil men in Houston about their languid decarbonization efforts. Instead, they softened the tone and calmly encouraged oil CEOs to produce more crude to offset the loss of supply from Russia. Barkindo made an elusive reference to electric car billionaire Elon Musk's tweet a while ago, we need to increase oil and gas production immediately. One oilman in the audience was delighted by his, well, we told you so, state. We need a strong oil and gas industry at this very point in the country during the energy transition, said John Hess, boss of the oil company that bears his name. Russia used to be seen as a reliable partner. Jurgen says he is now seen as not only untrustworthy but also undesirable. Oil company executives were worried that if Russian oil were to become untouchable, the price of crude oil could reach $200 a barrel this year. They were nervous because, aside from the stance on the stage, many oil company bosses are privately concerned that the Russian crisis may set the death knell on their industry. The EU's new strategy is already increasing greener alternatives. Prolonged volatility and high prices, which chill consumers and frustrate investors, could also give American politicians the motivation they need to accelerate the move away from fossil fuels. Will prices increase? Will oil prices continue to rise? The answer depends on several factors, notably the embargo. The US imports small amounts of petroleum products from Russia, which is an easily manageable cut. Helen Curry, chief economist at American oil company ConocoPhillips, thinks the ban won't have much impact, as American refineries are already finding ways to optimize this loss of imports. During the conference, Canadian energy companies claimed they could increase production, tomorrow, to replace a third of imports from Russia. In the analysis, it is emphasized that the situation may change if America brings the world together around a global embargo, however, such an outcome seems unlikely. The EU is reticent, at least in the short term. China and India, which hate American sanctions and refuse to condemn the Russian invasion, would not be involved in such an initiative. Kenneth Medlock of Rice University says that a recent gas deal between Russia and China in euros rather than dollars is a sign that the two countries can act together in the face of American sanctions. Antoine Half of the French data analytics firm Kairos, it confirms that European, 
Japanese, and South Korean buyers, do not touch Russian crude. He adds, however, that he has heard whispers that some of the larger businesses could silently take deliveries. The large increase in transit crude oil over the past two weeks confirms Cairo's views. Half thinks this points to Russian tankers looking for new buyers after being rejected from their original destination. He states that up to 3 million barrels of Russian crude oil in the market, which was 4.5 million barrels a day before the war, may be out of the market. Regarding the barrels, eyes are turned to OPEC. Barkindo criticizes such ideas, saying that, no one can replace, the possible loss in Russian production, which he identified as perhaps 8 million barrels a day, including petroleum products. The world does not have that big of a capacity. Perhaps most of the 2 million barrels per day loss is in Saudi Arabia. Available from Arabia and United Arab Emirates. Far from rushing to side with America, their leaders reportedly refused to even answer Biden's calls, satisfied with U.S. policy in the Middle East. Barkindo also stated that the cartel remained neutral even in wars between its members, such as Iran-Iraq in the 1980s and Kuwait-Iraq in 1990-91, by clearly stating that it cannot be excluded from the OPEC-plus arrangement created by non-member countries due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine.